In this video, we are finally kicking off the F1 Aerodynamics Basics playlist, in which we try to understand F1 Aerodynamics from a more fundamental perspective. Well, I said before starting to talk about aerodynamics as a whole, let's try to create a video in which we try to explain which part of the air that approaches the car lands up where, so that you guys have an understanding of the amount of flow turning that happens around an F1 car. So without wasting too much time, let's dive into it. This video is in collaboration with Airshaper, which is an online CFD platform that can be used to quickly develop ideas. So we are using the Airshaper platform to try and visualize the flow field around an F1 car. So this is what the Airshaper online platform looks like when you try to use it. So you can set up your simulation. It's a very simple procedure where you upload an STL file, you choose your velocity and the orientation of the model and then you choose certain specific settings if you have a moving ground or some radiators and off you go you are able to run the simulation you don't have to worry about meshing and all the other details which normally come in a cfd solution these details however i have to say are very very important when it comes to detail analysis but for quick understanding of what is going on during your concept phase it is useful to kind of have a procedure that allows you to fast track to ideas. And I guess that is what the Airshaper platform really, really empowers you with. So we can see some of the post-processing that is available online once your simulation is run. So we can see the pressure clouds, which can be used to check the areas of wake. Uh, then we can jump on to the surface pressure distribution, which shows you the regions which are pressurized and regions which have lower pressure. So, which also allows you to distinguish between regions that are producing downforce and are producing drag in a way. Then we can also check out the surface friction, which gives you an idea of where separations are happening in terms of separation lines. And then we can look at the vertical streamlines and the horizontal streamlines to try and understand how the flow field looks like around the car. And then we have additional features such as noise, which is used to understand the noise signature and where that signature is coming from. And then you can always look on to the forces and the moments in the global coordinate systems or in a specific coordinate system that you have specified. Along with that, you have the simulation output that is shown on the left hand side where it shows you the surface frontal area. Um, it shows you the drag coefficient. It shows you the lift coefficient. Uh, so as to understand how these have changed compared to your previous simulation. So to begin with, let us use the vertical streamline feature to understand some of the flow features around an F1 car. So let's begin with the front wing. What I really want to point out here is the amount of flow curvature that is present as the flow goes underneath the wing. So as I move the seeding line slightly towards, towards one of the ends of the wing, you will see that the flow that goes underneath the wing changes the direction depending upon what the pressure distribution is on the wings. So depending on whether the front wing is inboard loaded or outboard loaded, this flow curvature will change. But just look at the amount of turning that happens underneath the front wing. It is not very intuitive that you, this is how the flow works. You know, even if you look at the seeding streamline outside the, the, you know, at a line that is outside the span wise position of the front wing, you can see that you still have a lot of air that seeps underneath the front wing and then goes on the inside phase of the tire which is towards the tire contact patch which is a very very sensitive region that we must be able to treat properly especially as the car goes in here. Secondly, I want to point out the flow over the front tire itself. So you can look at how the wheel cover is helping you to keep the flow attached more around the front tire as compared to a situation where you would not have them, uh, your tire would separate like a cylinder, but like a rotating cylinder in this case, because the tires are rotating, right? But the wheel covers do help you to close the wake by making sure that the separation point on the top face of the tire is at least as rearwards as possible. Next, I want to talk about the flow around the G line, which is this undercut that everybody is talking about. And I want you to show, even though the undercut is not very prominent in this geometry, we can see what Red Bull are trying to do and what other teams are trying to do with this area. Uh, we've seen a lot of flow pictures that show 
uh, how the flow through the undercut is absolutely attached and is fed to the rear end of the car but in this model you can see that it's not that successful because it's separating around this corner and the flow then kind of lazily goes in this section and is not really doing the exact thing as you would expect what is happening on the f1 car but what you can see here is like the clear direction in which the teams are pushing to try and direct the flow towards the rear end of the car what is also very interesting is that if you zoom in to this particular seeding line wherein you have the downwashing side pods in a way is the amount of downwash that you see in this seeding line so the air that would be probably going in this particular section if you imagine the Aston Martin side pods or the water slides that we so call them you're trying to take that air and specifically direct it or downwash it over the diffuser so that you can feed uh, the flow expansion from the diffuser by feeding in good amount of energy over the top of the diffuser but also feeding a good amount of energy in this gap uh, because that airflow, because the Aston Martin's water slides are quite deep in its own right, that airflow will land up seeping in this in this section right here, um, which is not just fed to the beam wing, but is also fed in the gap in between the rear tire and the diffuser, which normally feeds losses into the diffuser. So coming on to the horizontal streamlines, I guess the most interesting bit to see is the horizontal streamlines that go underneath the car. If you just pull them up slightly more below, what you can see is something absolutely amazing. You can see how the airflow lands up pinching itself from the front wing uh, as it goes around the front tires and then expands themselves again as it approaches the front floor. What you can also notice really nicely here is that the front two channels are the one which are responsible for the primary vortex generation. So you can see the two vortices that are shed off the front two strakes. And then you can see the outwash that is used to generate to increase the expansion from the front floor and also to treat the front wheel wake. Uh, so you can see the flow expanding and then you can see the, the main two vortex structures traveling through the entire floor and then you can see the inwash that comes in which comes in naturally because of the difference in pressure between the free stream and the floor and then that seeps in uh, to go into the diffuser and then you have your own diffuser vortex structures which are basically originated all the way from the front so you can see a lot of interesting details but again the point of this video is to show you what goes where in a way you can also see the flow then lands up expanding through the diffuser and lands up having a lot of upwash which is the vertical expansion that we normally speak about in our diffuser videos additionally if we pull these streamlines slightly up you can see the flow over the suspension the, um, that is really important which kind of tells you why suspension layout is very important because then the suspension layout helps you to create the kind of flow field that you would like uh, for the front floor which is a big performance differentiator on these years regulation and also the suspension kind of dictates the flow around the side pods and this is why Mercedes for example had to change their front suspension when they came up with their white side pod philosophy so that they could optimize the flow field that is delivered to the side pods and to the rear end of the car. If I move a slice slightly up, you can then start seeing the flow that gets fed to the rear wing. Uh, again, this is a very interesting bit because um, it's not very intuitive which part of the flow goes to the rear wing after seeing the flow in, around an F1 car. But you can clearly see here that the flow that is dominantly going to the rear wing comes from um, a lot of the flow that is going from the cockpit area, the chassis area and the engine cover area, right? And this is why you have the sticky uppy bits that Sam Collins like to call them because they try to suppress the losses that come off on these regions so that you try to deliver as high amount of energy as possible to the rear wing so that you can make it as less draggy as possible because that gives you a sp top speed advantage like the one that Red Bull has. So that is why you see um, the cooling vents and the engine cover strategically kind of designed to kind of match the rear wing philosophy that is present on the car. So basically depending on how you've designed your engine cover and how the flow goes around the, you know, how much losses are present around the cockpit, 
you will design your rear wing around that and that is also why you see the rear wing is shaped the way it is so yeah that was a quick introduction to what goes where kind of a video and i just want to leave some of my honest opinions and thoughts about the airshaper platform i think it's really great for doing quick iterations and doing quick design studies however i would recommend them to try and introduce some pictures of their mesh because for an aerodynamicist if you do not know how well your mesh is resolved you can't really trust your results that much so definitely um, have a feature that allows us to look at the mesh at least and the second feature i would really love is to be able to compare similar cases because you know the entire cfd world in development looks at deltas and if you can't compare two cases you can't actually know how and where you're improving in terms of your simulations now i don't know if these features are available for a more advanced setting or something like that but i do know that they are not available for the day-to-day -day user so these are two features i would highly recommend for the airshaper platform to improve themselves even more and have even more success so thank you for watching this video and if you're looking forward to the f1 aerodynamics basic series stick around and hit that subscribe button